This is Michael Orl of MobileBurn.com, and today I have with me the Samsung SGHT 469 The Gravity 2 for T-Mobile USA. Uh, the Gravity 2 is a messaging-oriented device. You see it has a normal alphanumeric keypad here, but it also slides open to reveal a four-row QWERTY keyboard, which is uh, quite convenient for email, text messaging, and, of course, instant messaging. Take a look at the basic hardware features on the device. We'll start on the left edge. Simple volume control uh, can be used for muting calls uh, when they're ringing. Two megapixel camera, fixed focus, no autofocus on the back. Speaker grill as well. The cover comes off to reveal a battery, the SIM card slot. And over here we have a micro SD card slot. Now I've got one of my own cards in here right now. It doesn't ship with a card. Uh, this is an 8 gig card, so it means it works with micro SDHC cards. You can put up to uh, 16 gig cards are available right now. Put the cover back on. On the right hand edge we have a proprietary port for the Samsung charger and Samsung stereo headphones and wired headsets. And the camera shutter button on the right hand side. Take a look at the keypad, normal 12 key alphanumeric layout dedicated uh, messaging function button. You can set it to inbox, creating a new message, instant messaging, a couple of different options. Back key, also a clear key for in the editors. Call end, call send, and of course the two soft keys. This center circle here is the D-pad and there's a large center select button in the middle. Open it up so we can take a look at the keyboard. The keyboard on the Gravity 2 is pretty nice. It's like, as I mentioned before, it's four rows. So we have a Nice row across the bottom for the space bar, some punctuation keys, comma, period, which are quite common. And everything's laid out in the normal order. You know, the keys line up appropriately, which is nice. These buttons on the left and right edge are soft keys. At first I thought they might have been alt keys or something due to the orange color, but they line up with the little graphical icons you can see on the display there, that little wedge shaped. Uh, the keys are a bit rubbery. Uh, not bad though, fairly stiff. Uh, they work pretty well. Nice solid click to them. There's an OK button down here in the lower left hand corner that serves the same purpose as the OK button in the middle of the D-pad. Take a look, closer look at the keys. You can see there's a Alt button right here for getting to things like the numbers which are across the top row or symbols in the other rows. Shortcut keys for www and .com since they're commonly entered arrow keys for moving around within the editor. You can also use the D-pad at any time. The Gravity 2 features a QVGA resolution display. We'll unlock it by pressing the left soft key here twice and then pressing the right soft key. It's uh, reasonably bright, nice and sharp, uh, but not nearly as colorful as higher-end Samsung displays like uh, Samsung's OLED displays that they've been pushing lately on high-end devices. Overall, I find the build quality of the Gravity 2 to be quite good. The sliding mechanism works very well, nicely snaps into place. Everything feels solid, there's no creaks anywhere, and it's a pretty good looking phone on top of all that. We'll take a look at the main menu by pressing on the left soft key here. You can see it's a carousel menu. There is an option to change it back to a grid of icons though. You can see that the menu works in both landscape and portrait modes, as do most all the applications on the device. If we go into settings, we'll take a look at the personalization options and here's the profile support. You can see there's normal profiles, individual profiles that you can configure. Nice tabbed interface. Display settings. You can set the wallpaper but there's no theme support whatsoever on the device. Here's the messaging key. It shows you the options you can use to assign to this dedicated messaging key right here. So you can have the creative message which is what I'm using right now or Go to your inbox, email, or instant messaging application. Let's we'll switch it over to IM and we'll set it to AIM. We'll use that a little bit later in the video. You can see I've switched over the menu to an icon grid and we're going to go into the messaging application and just create a test message here. Pick a contact, John Doe, and we'll type in a quick message. I'm pretty pleased with the layout of the keyboard. Uh, everything lines up the way it should, and, and I like that the fact that there are commas and periods readily available without having to use an alt or a shift or function or anything like that. Send off the message.
close up the device and we'll go back to the standby screen and show you that now the, the messaging button here will bring up the instant messaging client. I have AIM loaded right here. I'm logged in. I have an ongoing conversation with another one of our test accounts. And you see this smooth scrolling inside the app. Uh, the only complaint I have is if you lose signal for whatever reason, say you're in a subway, it won't resend a message once uh, you get a signal again. So you can see I tried to send this message here and then it said request timed out because we didn't have a signal at the moment. The device in general seems to have a bit of a mediocre performance when it comes to antenna reception, so that might be a problem for some people that aren't in um, real strong signal areas. We'll jump into the main menu here and pull up messaging once again so we can get to email. I have a Gmail account already configured. Like instant messaging, email makes use of your text messaging allotment, so you best have an unlimited text messaging option if you're really going to do a lot of email. You can see the way there's, there's some uh, attachment support, even for PDFs. I had downloaded these previously, so they come up quickly. You can use the volume key to zoom in. You can see it works. 